Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call us right now for more help at 866-945-8070. eight custom reports to set up in QuickBooks Online. Now that I've been doing this a while and working with a lot of customers, a lot of clients, uh, one of the benefits of using QuickBooks Online is that I can automate the process of sending out weekly reports to the clients. Now, I mentioned this in the write-up, I'm gonna mention it here. I don't generally just set these reports up and send them. Because we're able to be so efficient using cloud technologies, it frees up the time I need so that, especially in the beginning when I'm onboarding a client, I'll schedule the time to review reports with the client, make sure that they're clear on what they're getting and why and how to read them, and we'll go through them together. More often at the beginning, less often as time goes on, because as time goes on and because I've gotten them into the process, first of all, they appreciate it, it adds huge value to the service we offer, but then they get it. They know how to read the reports, they don't need me, they just reach out to me through Slack or something to get questions answered. And occasionally they'll ask me to log in with them so we can review something a little more deeply, and I'm happy to do it because I've got plenty of time. So over time, I've established eight different reports that as a starting point, I start off with with every single client. So in the write-up and in the the rest of this video, I'm going to walk you through each of those videos, or each of those reports. But I want to encourage you to read the write-up. If you happen to be watching this on YouTube, check the description for the link over to the blog post. Because in this video, I'm only going to show you how to set up the reports. I'm not going to discuss the analytics of it, or or I should say the analysis of it and the strategies around it. The write-up talks about the analysis and strategies for how to look at these reports. I might do it in another video later on, but this will end up being a 30-minute video if I try and do it here. So again, check the link in the description so you can get over to the blog post if you're not already there and read the write-up because the write-up will walk you through each of these reports and how to analyze and build strategies for your company around the reading of these reports. Let's take a look. Okay, we got a lot of work to do. We got eight custom reports to set up in QuickBooks Online. But first, make sure that you check the description if you're on YouTube directly and click the link over to the blog post because in the blog post, I'm going to get into the analysis and strategy that goes along with running some of these reports. I'm not going to do that here in the video because it'll be a 30-minute video. I might do another video later on about the subject. Anyway, let's get into this. Let's start looking at the QuickBooks Online Test Drive Company because that's a good way to practice on this. So over here on my website, under any of the drop downs that you'll see, they're all the same drop down, regardless of which thing you hover. Uh, under resources, you'll find links. And of course, once you're there, you'll see a link to launch the QuickBooks Online Test Drive. Just an easy way to remember where to go to get access to this. You can also Google it. Okay, so the first report, and first of all, what we'll need to do is go over here, and we're going to go into, uh, actually, no, let's go to reports, forget that, and we're going to go to custom reports, right? We're going to start populating this area with some of these reports that we're going to use. So now let's run an actual report. Let's go to standard. We want the balance sheet, and we want this year to date, but we want to group by month, because as I mentioned in the write-up, it's much more useful to see the trends, to see what this looks like month over month. And then we're gonna customize this. Uh, Actually, sorry, we're not gonna customize this. We're gonna save it. We're gonna call it balance sheet, year to date, monthly, right? And we're gonna create a new group. The first time we do this, we're gonna call it Seth's reports or whatever you wanna call it, right? We're gonna add that in and save it. And now if I go back over to reports here in custom reports, There it is, and this happens sometimes, even though I saved it or thought I saved it in the group, it didn't make it in there, so if we simply click edit, we can now add it to the group. And sharing it means do I want others to see it or is this only for me, right? Save and close, and it says I can't save this report because there's no other active user in this account. Oh, so I'll just say none on this. It says I can't share it, so that's fine. Didn't really care about that for today. Um, So there's the year-to-date monthly. We're going to do the same exact thing with the profit and loss. So I'm going to go into the standard reports. We're going to run the profit and loss. Make sure the date range is this year-to-date. We're going to group it by month. Run that. Again, month over month, much easier to analyze and much more useful to analyze, I should say, in terms of looking at the trends. And like I said, the write-up, I go into more detail with some examples of how to use that information. So we're going to save this. Now we've already got the group created. Uh, We're going to also put, oops, not that, 
year to date monthly. And then we're gonna save that. And I always confirm that it's saved successfully. So go back over to custom reports. And now there it is, okay? So that's the balance sheet, year to date monthly, profit and loss year to date monthly. Next, we're gonna grab the statement of cash flows. You are not gonna find that at the top of the standards. So control F, cash flow. Right, boom, that takes me right down here. Control F, I've done an, another couple of videos um, that mention using your browser find feature in order to find what you're looking for. Really handy. Now, in the QuickBooks desktop product, you could not get a statement of cash flows totaled by month. Here you can. So, and again, much more useful to be able to analyze this that way. So, we're going to save that. Again, year to date monthly. And again, in the same group and save. That takes care of the statement of cash flows. And again, I talk in detail in the write-up about how the statement of cash flows kind of closes the gaps between the P&L and balance sheet. And you can analyze the P&L and balance sheet and you can come to some conclusions or more than one potential conclusion. The statement of cash flows will sort of solidify which one is the right answer in terms of what you're analyzing when you're looking at the balance sheet and profit and loss, which is why I always tell people you really need all three financial statements in order to understand the entire picture. Okay, so let's go to reports and let's go to find aging. Right, so here's our accounts receivable aging summary. That's actually here in the favorites, but I wanted to find it in the whom you owe, what you owe, right? Um, accounts payable aging summary is what we want. And again, we're gonna save that in the same group. This one you're not totaling by month or anything. And yes, it's in the standards and you can start it, but the point is to have this group so that you can access them all easily. But also I'm gonna show you when I'm done here, how to schedule it to go out to the client every single week, which is what makes this really powerful. And it makes clients think that we're working really hard when really we're just leveraging technology to do this stuff automatically. So now we want the aging summary, which I do happen to have here. And once again, we're gonna save that in the group. Okay, now here's where I want you to pay attention because here's one that's a little different and uh, really cool actually, if you ask me. So we're gonna go to reports and I wanna create register reports for any bank and credit card account. So I'm actually gonna start with the balance sheet and we'll go to the checking account. And here's the trick to this. A lot of times I would send this, you know, which is just a detail report showing the client every transaction that's gone in or out of the bank account during a certain period. Usually I gotta do it this month to date or last month. But QuickBooks Online, and I've never seen this anywhere else, has this option down at the bottom saying since 30 days ago. And so sending this to the client every single week will give them an opportunity to analyze every transaction that went through, and they'll see everything four times before it cycles out of the report. So that's really cool, because to me, that gives us ample opportunity to identify uh, potential problems, things that don't belong, things that are miscoded, that kind of thing. So let's just call this a uh, bank, we'll call it checking detail last 30, something like that. Add this to the group. And I do this for every bank account and every credit card account. And initially I review it together with the client to make sure they understand what they're getting, what they're actually looking at there, and how I want them to look at it. And this has helped me save a ton of time because it helps me to train my clients for how to look at this stuff and how to find things that I wouldn't necessarily know because I don't know the day-to-day -day in and outs of their business as well as they do, right? The next one we're gonna run, uncleared transactions. So again, we're gonna start with the balance sheet. Let's go into the same checking account. And this one we're gonna customize. We're gonna go to the filters and we're gonna scroll down until we see cleared. And that's here. When you check it, it seems like it just disappeared. That's because it went right up to the top here. We're gonna choose uncleared. And for the dates, I want all dates. I want anything that's uncleared ever. Because I wanna see if there's something in here from three years ago that never cleared, I wanna know about it, right? And this will usually exactly explain the difference if, for example, you're looking at your banking dashboard. First, let's save this before I forget. So uncleared for the checking, add it to the group, save. Um, this will often explain the exact difference in the banking between what's in QuickBooks and what is in the bank account, right? So you can do the math and see it might add up. This is a sample company file, so I don't know for sure if that's going to account for this exact difference. 
So this will often explain the difference between what your bank account says you have and what QuickBooks says you have. Should explain the exact difference to the penny, actually. If it doesn't, something is probably wrong. So that is uncleared transactions, and that's a really important one. Last, but certainly not least, of course, are your uncategorized income and expenses. So for that one, we're going to start with our profit and loss. Let's see if we have any on these uh, sample files. Uh, don't have any uncategorized income. We'll use miscellaneous as the example. Same idea, really. So I would run this. I would call it uncategorized income. And I would save this to, let's just do it. And as I was mentioning in the write-up, with something like this, the first time you do it, there may be a lot in here because you hadn't been on top of it yet. But when you're in the habit of having the client look at this every week and working with the client on it, there shouldn't ever be more than maybe two or three like we see here, which means you don't need to go to all the trouble of putting it into a spreadsheet and having them comment on it. I would just have them look at the report each week and go into Slack. In Slack, we have a channel called Uncategorized, and they can post right in that channel and say, hey, Hicks Hardware was for repairs and maintenance, and Tim Phillip Masonry was also repairs and maintenance, and the uh, insurance agency, you know, I might put it in on categories because I don't know which kind of insurance this is, so they can confirm if it's liability insurance or some other kind of insurance. So that's how we uh, handle the uncategorized stuff, ultimately. Now, let's go over to reports, and let's go to custom reports. Last part. Notice here for the actual report group, it says unscheduled. We're going to click edit. And I'm going to set an email schedule. And I'm going to ask the client, what day of the week would you like to get your reports from me? And they're going to, and I'm going to set this to weekly. And they're going to tell me Wednesdays. And I'm going to say, great, Wednesdays, you will get your reports. They will be sent overnight, Tuesday night, probably around 12 or 1 in the morning. Um, I've seen conversations with accountants that frankly have me scratching my head, literally, because I don't understand what the big deal is. But people say, oh, I don't want them seeing that the reports went out at one o'clock in the morning because they're going to think that I'm available then. No, they're not going to think you're available then. And if they do, something's wrong with them. But even if they do and they email you, you don't have to respond. And if they email you again at six o'clock the next morning and say, hey, I emailed you at one o'clock in the morning. Why didn't you respond? You should probably fire them as a client. But at least the first go around, try and explain to them, hey, I wasn't actually awake at that hour. It's just programmed to send them at that time. And I imagine there are other people who don't want the clients to know that it's automated because they want them to actually think they were the ones up there doing the work. And again, I think people who are getting hung up on those things are wasting their time on the wrong things. Just set up the damn process and let it run. That's what it's there for. And your clients should be excited that they have an accountant who understands and, and, and then feels it's important to use these kind of things to run things very efficiently. Uh, and so that's my two cents or 10 cents worth on that one. So once I do that, I can customize which email addresses this goes to. I can customize the message that goes out. Here's your weekly reports, blah, blah, blah. You might even stick a link. If you're an accountant listening to this like me, you might even stick a link to your schedule once or acuity or whatever calendar program you're using and put a message in here that says, here's your financial reports. Click here to schedule a 30 minute call if you'd like to review them with me. Boom. How's that for added value? No accountants are doing that. Very few, just a few like me. Um, so you'll blow your clients away with that level of service that you're giving them. And and you do those things. And of course, you charge more because it's worth more because we're, you're giving them a much better service than 90% of the other bookkeepers and accountants out there who aren't even telling them that they're doing this. They're just sending them weekly reports and saying, here, here's the oatmeal. I'm throwing it on the floor. Go pick it up. Right, So it's just it's so easy when you take the time to do things like this to make yourself stand out as an accountant or bookkeeper who is frankly superior to the rest in terms of the level of service they're willing to provide. And it doesn't take a lot of extra effort. All you have to do is learn to use features like this to set things up in such a way that you can add that tremendous value to your clients. And since I'm not taking the time myself to run these eight reports every week, it's actually saving me a ton of time. So that's the free time I can actually use to work with the clients for a half an hour a week or a month or whatever it is and go over this stuff with them. And again, if, if you're like me, then what you'll want to do is you'll want to insist on one meeting at least up front with the client going through all these reports and explain to them, here's what you're going to get on a weekly basis. It'll also give your client the opportunity to ask you about other reports that they might want to see. And that certainly has come up over time where clients have said, hey, you know what? I would love a report that gives me this, this, and this. And I say, sure, I can go customize that for you. Not a problem. I'll add it into the group of reports that you get every single week. So Again, we talk a lot in the accounting world these days about being the more strategic advisor. This is how you do it. 
So I'm not just telling you what to do. I'm telling you how you can do it. That's eight custom reports to set up in QuickBooks Online. My name is Seth David. I'm from Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. As always, I hope you learned something here and had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely, fa fa absolutely fantastic day. Got a little tongue-tied there. And I look forward to seeing you on the web.